On the sea of time, the exploration of the new world happened only yesterday. It was during this age of discovery when adventurers like Magellan, the Gama, Columbus and Drake, traveling only at the mercy of the wind, sent shockwaves through every level of society in 15th and 16th century Europe with their news about a new world beyond the sea. It was as though life had been found on another planet. And since then, the sail has become so inextricably woven into the tapestry of adventure that to this day, from the prairie schooners of the American West to our modern spaceships, our language of discovery can hardly be expressed without it. Today, half a millennium later, we retrace the footsteps of these explorers, their conquests, combats, failures, and living legacies to their original ports of call on a voyage of rediscovery aboard a modern schooner, the Bird of Paradise, in Journeys to the Edge of the Earth. On location at sea and in historically rich destinations, Journeys to the Edge of the Earth is a modern sailor's 21st century search for the marks of these bold and little understood men along the beaches of past discovery where their fading footprints can still be found. Their story is told from a sailor's point of view and their legacy is documented through the lives of people who live on these same shores today, along with intriguing stories about chance encounters and the ever-present creatures of the sea. He's a black sea turtle from the Gulf. It's pretty active. And we're pretty happy to do something for earth, animals, or people. These are cave paintings painted by Indians dating anywhere from 600 to 2,000 years ago. The paint doesn't contain any organic material. They were people that cannot otherwise be identified because we don't have artifacts that can positively be related to the paintings. There are artifacts in the painted caves, but are they left there by the painters? I came down, uh, when, uh, when you finish medical school, you have to put in a year of uh, social service in a rural community. And so there was all the spaces that were available, I picked up one that uh, had the best fishing. <laughs> I came down here and I well on my third time I'll, I'll fish a little bit. Still doing it. <laughs> and this machinery over here is mining. Machine for the mining, the uh, flores. Mm -hmm. It's a big mining. The people working for a long, long time ago. Mm. For years ago. Gypsum? Now it's closed. Mm. They're bringing the, the old stuff and bringing it. So w this, this piece here, this is part of the mining? Yes. yes. What were they mining? Gold. 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 Ah. That'll draw a crowd. Yeah. In the warm waters of the Caribbean, the South Pacific, and the Indian Oceans, journeys to the edge of the earth follows in the wake of men who, for better or for worse, once strode the world stage for their kings, their gods, and their pockets. Men whose colonizing efforts, despite the hardships, prevailed, and whose daring, whose pain, and whose dreams and schemes made it safe for us to follow.